I have to fill you in on a little secret. Oh, what? Sweetie Bird herself, Tessa Netting, is in the studio, and we're here to talk about Tiny Toons Luniversity, which is now streaming on HBO Max, actually now Max, and on Cartoon Network. So, of course, you realize this means podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to, of course, you realize this means podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Graves. And with me today is an honor and pleasure to bring to you the voice of Sweetie Bird herself, as well as a personality in her own right across all social media platforms, Tessa Netting. Hi, Tessa. How are you? Hello. I am just wonderfully tickled this glorious Eve. I don't know what why that just came out of my mouth, but we're just going to go with it. You know? We'll go with it. <laughs> Hi. Um, so it is an honor to have you. This is a groundbreaking reboot because Tiny Toons is near and dear to my heart. And it is on its 33rd year of existing. Oh. And the anniversary wow. has poured so much love back into the fandom. And a lot of people are now reinvigorated by these characters and they're interested to see what's going on with them. Can you talk a little bit about growing up with the original adventure series? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Well, you know, Tiny Toons is celebrating its 33rd year, and so am I as a human. So I (laughs) (laughs) it was my 33rd birthday recently, so I just feel that it just makes me even more connected to Tiny Toons than I already was. We just had this cosmic connection. Um, But yes, I grew up with Tiny Toons, and I loved watching it. Saturday Morning Cartoons, baby. Back-to-back yeah. Animaniacs and Tiny Toons. It was my jam. So uh, I remember watching it with my sister and very fond memories of specifically hearing like the theme song playing because we would have like Saturday morning cartoons like on in the background when we were like doing other things and playing and yeah. setting up like, you know, <laughs> intense storylines for our dolls as <laughs> as many <laughs> children do. I just remember like specifically these storylines. and So cartoons would be in the background, but whenever the Tiny Toons theme song would like turn on or start playing, my sister and I would just like stop whatever we were doing and just like run around our living room and just kind of like dance to it because we just loved it so much. And another reason why I just really loved Tiny Toons was just all the songs and the singing and all of like that sort of like element to it. They did a full MTV episode. Like it was all about music. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so when there were whenever there was like music involved in our show whenever we got to sing something or especially when we got to record the theme song that was just like so 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 special to me and those were like my favorite days of recording um because uh i just i love it it just brought me right back to you know watching it as a kid so it was very nostalgic very full circle very mind-blowing to me Yeah, that 90s show was in the the renaissance of animation, especially for Warner Brothers. You had Animaniacs, you had uh, Tiny Toons, shows like Hysteria, Batman the Animated Series, Freakazoid, like all of these wonderful shows that Spielberg really ushered in after the success of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and the Looney Tunes had such a big presence in that, that it kind of just gave way to the floodgates being open for Warner Brothers to just green light all of these projects. So yeah, Tiny Toons definitely rose to the top because it was so unique having these younger yeah. characters that were not like it wasn't baby Bugs Bunny or like a kid version right. of Bugs Bunny. It was a new character in Buster and Babs and they were making their way in school to learn to become a Tiny Toon or a Looney Tune, if you will. And that is continually happening in this new series and you get to perform the continuation of that which is so cool and you're voicing one of my favorite characters sweetie bird she has this rock star personality and i feel like you exude that as well so it was perfect casting can you talk a little bit about what it was like for you to audition for this role and what was your reaction when you got it 
Oof. Okay, so before I answer that question, I have to fill okay. you in on a little secret because when you were like talking about Tiny Toons and Looney Tunes and all that, I I realized recently that I watched Tiny Toons before I even watched Looney Tunes. So oh, to what? me, it, right? I like I realized this because I was like, wait a second. Like I remember like Tiny Toons is like one of my first memories of like watching like you know cartoons in the morning, and then I'm like, but I, I must have known who Bugs Bunny was. But it's like I think I learned who Bugs Bunny was through watching Tiny Toons, and then I was like, wow. wait a second. So then I was like really trying to think and like go back, and I was like, wait, when did Space Jam come out? What did these things like? I was trying to piece together this timeline, and I'm like, I seriously think that I watched Tiny Toons first and I'm like whoa that's so crazy and it's also crazy to me to think that some kids might be watching our version of Tiny Toons and that might be their first introduction to like the Looniverse to Looney Tunes so it's just so cool so so I just had I had to mention that really quick (laughs) no I'm glad you Um, did a lot of people don't have that like perspective on it so i so here's a question for you off the cuff when you saw buster and babs like going to school did you want them to become looney tunes and star in their own shorts i i think i did i think it was one of those things where i just i mean i just wanted to be there with them wherever they went like if they ended up like being school dropouts and just doing their own thing and not like becoming a Looney Tune, I would have been on board. Like I, I would have been with them like in whatever direction they wanted to go. <laughs> That's so, um, really fun. But yeah, I had like such a connection to the Tiny Tunes even more than the Looney Tunes really. So I just had to bring that out of the way. Um, but going to your other question, when I found out in my audition process, uh, so I just auditioned for uh, this show it was just another um, audition from my agents and it was something where I submitted for Sweetie and I, you know, didn't hear back for a very long time. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's, you just get used to it. You have to like, you have to send things off and then you got to forget about it. Cause otherwise you'll go crazy. You will. If you just keep thinking about like, Oh, this one, this one, this one, you can't do it. You can't, it's not fun anymore. So, and I need to keep it fun in order to still enjoy it. So I'm like, you know what? Do my best, did my thing. We'll see. But I do remember we did have to um, sing the theme song in our audition and yeah, like in character, like they had us do the sides. And then at the end they had us sing the theme song and um, yeah. And again, that like made me so hype. It brought me right back. And I'm like, even if I don't get this, that was so fun. I got to sing the theme song. Like, oh, I loved it. Which theme song? Was it the original 90s theme song? or was It was it the original 90s one. one. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Because I don't think they had written the new one yet. Uh, okay. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. But they that was what they had us audition with, just the original. Um, cool. The, yeah, Tiny Two's Adventure theme song. And so then, uh, didn't hear back for a while. And then I just got a call from my agent saying that I booked it. And I was so (laughs) shocked because like there wasn't any callback. There wasn't any sort of like, because sometimes, especially with the role that's this big, like there's many callbacks, there's many stages. And also like, you know, it was, it was kind of out of nowhere. And I was just so hyped because it was during pandemic time. So it was you know, it was, it was a grim, it was, <laughs> it was a grim time. <laughs> yeah, it was like, stressful. Yeah, we all, yeah. Like, locked up, locked in our, like, you little know. apartments and trying to figure things out. Um, what yes. an incredible email or call. Was it an email or, or how did they contact uh, I you? I got a call. My agent, uh, Kathy, called me and she was like, honey, I have some exciting news. And I was like, oh my gosh, what? What? <laughs> what what's going on? Like, I'm, She's like, it was Tiny Toons. You booked Tiny Toons. I was like, what? Sweetie? And she's like, yeah. I was like, oh my God. And I just like, I freaked out because I wow. remember also like with the original audition, um, seeing like they gave us this art for um, like the characters, sort of what they were. It wasn't the final art, but just like to see like Sweetie's new vibe. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of times when I'm auditioning, if they give us artwork, oh, that's my favorite because I really like, I don't like to really dive into 
the description too much because sometimes that gets me into my head because I'll be like reading every word and being like, I have to be this and this and this and this with my voice. (laughs) Um, So for me, like the artwork can really help. And just this artwork that I saw of Sweetie's character, she had this like, like leather jacket on and she was so cool. And I just like fell in love with her. So like just immediately. Um, And then Aaron and Nate later told me that um, I was actually the first person that they cast. So um, so I'm like, that's cool. That's awesome. So I was the first one. I don't know about Big Daddy Spielberg. I have no idea what his process was or like (laughs) how he was involved. But like he he is approving things. So I'm guessing that he also approved. Yeah. but yeah, it was it was very exciting and very fun. And so Nate Cash and Aaron Gibson, those are the showrunners of this series. And yeah. uh, Gibson or Aaron Gibson wrote a lot of these episodes and the writing in this is so unique and it really does expand the characters in ways that we've never thought about before or seen. I love how Sweetie is right there by Bab's side, especially as she just joins the school and they're paired up as roommates and Babs is really unsure about not being with Buster, but Tessa or, but <laughs> see, I don't know where, okay. I don't know where Sweetie or Tessa begins and ends, uh, but Sweetie definitely like pulls her in and says like, you know, we're going to figure this out together. And it's through that friendship that is budding. You really get a sense of who Sweetie is. How much voice acting have you done before? Like prior to this? So I, I've been like doing little things here and there. Like I, when I first moved out to LA over 10 years ago now, but like just around 10 years, um, I, uh, I, I got a voiceover agent and, um, CESD and I've been with them ever since. And actually Pat Brady, who was one of my voiceover agents there, she found me originally like from the internet and was like, yeah, she, I did this Harry Potter Book of Mormon parody. Hello. Harry! I am the Chosen One. I would like to share with you this book about my life. Hello. Hagrid! You're a wizard, Harry. I know. And it blew up on the internet, <laughs> and she was a huge Harry Potter fan, as well as I am a huge Harry Potter fan. And she found it, and she's like, this is brilliant. This is incredible. If you're ever in LA, give me a call. And so I was like, well, actually, I am coming to LA, so I am going to give you a call. Um, and when I met with her, she uh, asked me, she's like, have you ever thought about voice acting? And I really had never thought about it up to that point. But it's like, I had really, like, before even coming to LA, I'd never even thought about LA at all up to that point. So I kind of just like wow. followed where my career made sense and where like I was like, okay, I'm ready to try something new or this makes sense for me. Or like, I see an opportunity here. Let's just try this. And, um, and so when I signed with CESD, I also signed with the voiceover department because she's like, okay, just come on in and give us 10 voices and let's see how you do. And I went in the booth and I just, I loved it. I loved it immediately. So, um, she's like, your voice, it fits in. Like, we think that we could find a place for you. Just know that this is hard. Like it's, it takes a long time. It's a hard thing, but just keep, keep on at it. And that's basically like for the past 10 years, what I've been doing, I've been doing little things here and there. I did like some loop groups. I did um, a bunch of audio books, um, like during the pandemic time. And yeah. I think that really helped me like, you know, sort of prep for Sweetie because I was just really involved in like the storytelling of characters and it just made me really, really love voiceover even more. Um, But yeah, there's just like little things, but Tiny Toons is my first cartoon that I've ever done. So for this to be like the first cartoon is super meta because it's like Sweetie is learning how to become a cartoon from these iconic cartoons. And I am like basically (laughs) learning how to be a cartoon from these iconic voice actors. So it's like, it's unreal. It's a real weird, amazing turn of events. And I am just so honored to be a part of a show like this. And I'm just literally every second, I'm just like, pinch me. This is unreal. This is so fun. I'm having a blast. I (laughs) I love love it. it. 
So that's why I asked that question because you you have this career that is spawning stage and YouTube and all kinds of different performances, obviously a TV show and now voice acting. And I'm wondering which, and you might've already answered this in your question and that preamble, but which of those has affected your voice acting career the most, would you say? Ooh. I mean, I think that all have contributed contributed to it in some mm-hmm. way, but I really think that especially with like doing a cartoon like this, like that theater background, baby, <laughs> that <laughs> that helped me in ways that I just didn't even know would even come into play here. But like the singing, like I was I was on Broadway for two and a half years. Um, I was in a, I did over a thousand performances of Billy Elliot, the musical. So it's like, I was, woo, I was in it. I I was, I was, I was in it full throttle. And so that like theater training, that singing background really helped me here because I was very confident and comfortable, like with my voice with singing. And so at least I, I think just like being able to hear pitches of things, it helps me like to find um, like just different characters. Um, and also it just, there's something about theater and this is more like your body versus your voice. But when you're acting on stage, you have to exaggerate just every part of your body in order to be seen by like, you know, yeah. the person sitting in the back row. And when you're doing a cartoon that's this big and you have to bring it to 10 every single time, it's really doing the same thing with your voice. Like you have to have that stamina and you have to be able to take it there and really, um, because those are the takes they're going to want. They're going to want the crazy ones. Uh, I also think improv like is really, really helpful with this kind of acting as well, because it just takes you out of your head a little yeah. bit. Um, so I think that like improv acting and uh, musical theater, that that helps me the most. Very That's helpful. Amazing. Everything, everything helps. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> So that's the perfect lead way because I'm wondering where Tessa Netting ends and Sweetie Bird begins because I feel like there's a lot of overlap in that energy, in that like rock star personality that you bring. And I love it. I, I think it fits the character really well. Is there anything about the traits that the character exudes that you see yourself relating to while you're voicing it? Oh, yeah. I mean, Sweetie Bird is like an exaggerated version of me, like for sure. <laughs> There's so much of me in Sweetie. Uh, just like, you know, she's small, she's loud, she's intense, she's passionate, and she loves her friends more than anything. And I feel like that that really is just like my entire being and my entire soul. Um Sometimes she can be a lot and I get it. And so can I, sometimes I can be a lot. And uh, again, I understand it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for those who are like willing to accept sweetie, embrace sweetie, like they are shown the best parts of her. And I feel like that's the same with me and the same with, um, you know, the different types of people that I love. And just like all of like the tidy tunes, it's weird because a lot of um, the voice actors that play like these roles, there's, there's big parts of them in their characters. Like I can really see, see them. So it's, it's wild that that it worked out like that. Totally. I definitely see Ashley and Babs and David in Plucky and Hampton. We, we talked about how their psyches also filter into their characters and you're no different. The, the work that you've done so far, can you talk about how Sweetie has evolved in this story? And, and is there anywhere that, I guess you like you can take the character that you you haven't seen yet. Yeah, I mean, you can sort of there's there's definitely some inklings of it and I think that it can go even further, but like Sweetie has this really tough exterior and you know, when she gets pushed yeah. or when she she just wants to explode and like has all these emotions, all these feelings, doesn't even know how to contain them sometimes. Um but deep down, there is just like such a warm, squishy inside of just so much love and so much like warmth and so much uh, just like passion there. And that's why I love her so, yeah. so, so much. And that's when like those episodes where she shows that, where she can be more vulnerable. Yeah! Sorry. 
Sorry, you turned this room into an alphabetized nightmare. Sorry, but agree to disagree. Sorry! Are like my favorite and especially like with Babs like I, you've seen like their friendship but I think that there's so much more that can be done with the two of them because I feel like they're they're just starting it's like when you have that new friendship with someone it's like it, it's exciting but and and they've you've already seen them sort of like clash a little bit but there's just so much further that that it can go I can just like uh, I could just see the different scenarios and then same with just her personality like with the other boys as well like it's it's cool to sort of see that yeah. how she bounces off with like Buster and with Plucky and Hampton like they they all have their individual friendships which is I think so cool about Luniversity versus just the original Tiny Toons adventures is that in this show like because we're given more time in the episode we have more time to like dive into these characters and their specific really not just like their group relationship because that was like the original you could feel right. like the friendship the camaraderie but here you can really dive yeah. deeper into those like personal relationships that you have with friends and i think those are really special relationships so i would want to see just like more of that more of the ones that make me like go on smile and make me feel like just happy and warm inside those are always my favorite stories i'm thinking of extra extra so extra where sweetie is trying to help babs with the newspaper and go against plucky this headline doesn't belong here plucky it's too mean and catchy these stories will rake in the readers the whole school will be talking I taught, I taught, nothing. Tweety Bird blind without contact lenses. Just that fun little rivalry that they created is really just entertaining to watch. But, you know, having that uh, be a part of this show is really special. So Candy Milo originated the voice of Sweetie, Sweetie Pie in Tiny Toon Adventures. And she has nothing but praise to say about your performance. Have you had a chance to meet her? And what was that interaction like? Oh my gosh. Well, I have nothing but praise to say about Candy because I am so obsessed with her. I literally just want to be her when I'm older. Just every, like, I, she is my dream. Just everything about She's her. I love her so much and she is so talented. It's insane. It is, she is one of those like iconic voice actors that just keeps like hit after hit after hit after it's like you think that she's done everything oh no here's something else she pulls this out she pulls it it's like it's incredible and I did get to meet her in person and speak to her and talk to her and she was the nicest warmest most welcoming and just best person like seriously that's Aww. and that meant so much to me because I was I was so nervous like so nervous to like to step into these shoes because you know sweetie means a lot to her and sweetie means a lot to me and I think when that happens it's like I don't want to mess it up her character meant a lot to me so it's like we 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 see that and we both understand that and so I think like her welcoming me in is only gonna like make I'm like I'm gonna remember that forever like I'm gonna remember that and if I ever get to welcome someone else in for who knows for any reason I'm just gonna rem like remember what she did for me and how kind and amazing she is and it's so cool that she is playing like Dean Granny and Witch Hazel like on yeah. our show <laughs> as well so it's like so whenever uh Sweetie gets to have like an interaction with like the Dean I'm just like ah. This is the best. This is like sweetie and sweetie, like <laughs> back together again. Um, so it's just so special and everything about her is incredible. And she is my bird hero. I just, I hope that I can do her proud, do this character proud that we both love so much. Absolutely. Bird hero needs to be uh, um, like crocheted onto something or, or made a patch onto a, a bag or something oh my gosh there's this one hold on i have to tell you this one thing before i have to i because i have to say this because it reminded me of yeah, something so in luniversity sweetie has this neon sign as you can tell i love neon signs she has this neon sign <laughs> above her bed that says funny vibes and it is my favorite thing it is so like when I first saw that I died and I was like I'm getting this made I'm gonna make this custom made and I'm gonna put this like in my office or in my room or somewhere I need this sign because it is just so hilariously perfect and there's also like t-shirts and different things that I see and I'm like I need this to exist in real life this is <laughs> like it's so 
clever and funny. And I just like just the 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 attention to detail that these artists have done is just mwah, 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 mwah. it's so good, it's so funny. Totally. And I also love when Babs redecorates the room and gets rid of all of Sweetie's nesting stuff because she's a bird uh, and she's replaced it with like bird vibes and like this pillow that says yes. laugh, love and eat worms. Do you have that? Have you made I that yet? This. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I need all of these things. I need the side. I need you the do. pillow. I need the shirt. <laughs> I need everything to exist in real life because it's so funny. That's hilarious. Yes. It's great. Oh, and that, I love it. that episode specifically, I remember watching that with my parents and everyone was just thought it was so funny because I'm kind of messy myself and my husband thought this was so funny. And I was like, okay, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I could be messy sometimes, but see, like, sweetie needs this and I need it to be messy sometimes too. We can compromise. It was so funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's all about touch feel. Like exactly. you, you have to like know what you're gonna wear based on touch. Right? I <laughs> my system works for me. I know where everything yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so have you gone back to the original Bob Clampett original shorts where Tweety is a naked bird, also pink? <laughs> I tore a putty cat. I did. I tore a putty cat. And he, he definitely yelled a lot because I'm wondering if that was the inspiration for the character design of Sweetie in Tiny Toon Adventures and then now given feathers and, you know, made into a broader character <laughs> right. with Sweetie Bird. Yeah, and, um, perhaps. Yeah. That that could definitely be, I have no idea how the inner workings of these brilliant minds, like, that create this character work. I wish, I wish I was, like, here you go, Tessa, here's a complete timeline of everything. I'd be like, ah, oh, look out, I'll put on my glasses and study up. I would have loved it. I, I want to know. It's like, how do I figure this out? Is there some vault I need to, like, break into at Warner Brothers? I don't know. Maybe it's in the tower. It's always in the tower. It's, it's just yeah. the vault. We just need to get in there. We'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's break into the water tower. 12 p.m. tonight. <laughs> They're like, ah! Or 12 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I know. They're like, it's Tessa again. I have like a wanted poster up. They're like, do not let this woman in. <laughs> That's like, I must know the secrets of the bird. I must know all the secrets. They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the abrasiveness is the same, definitely, uh, between Sweetie and Tweety. So, you know. I, I can see it. I can see it. Hey, nothing is a coincidence. <laughs> you don't want to mess with Sweetie T. Bird. So you're very much a geek and like into geek culture and definitely Harry Potter, as you have mentioned. So here's the fun question. What a Hogwarts house would Sweetie fit into if you were to do the Pottermore test? Oh, oh, I love this question. Okay. Um, this is difficult because I like, there's so many layers to Sweetie's personality that I was like, is it the obvious one? But I think it is the obvious one. I think she definitely is a Gryffindor um, just in every sense of okay. the word. She has that loyalty to her friends, but I don't see like the hardworking Hufflepuff, like kind, like I, Hufflepuff is the only other one that I was like, maybe Ravenclaw, nah, yeah. and um, Slytherin, nah. Um, but like Hufflepuff and Gryffindor are the two that I'm like, mm, but just her, like the fierceness, her boldness, like her bravery. I think she's I think she's a Gryffindor. I think I think that's a that's a Gryffindor right there if I've ever seen one. So that's what I would say. That's a good bet. Yeah. And you tell it what is your Hogwarts house? I am a Ravenclaw. So that that is that okay. is my Hogwarts house. I, I'm a Ravenclaw through and through. The most Ravenclaw person that you can meet. Like my favorite thing is just to like dive deep and upset. Like I find these hyper fixations and then I just want to know every single thing about this is why I'm breaking into the water tower. It's like I want to know everything. <laughs> um and just like 
but I don't want to be like the best because like being the best at a thing, that's a that's a Slytherin. It's you know, it's like I don't need to be the best voiceover yeah. person. I don't need to like win the awards. Like give give that to the boys. OK, it's like, you know, they they want to win their awards and do their thing. And, and I'll be cheering. I'll be cheering for them. Like, but I just want to have like as many experiences in life as I can. I want to experience everything and I want to learn everything. And I wish that I had more time in the day to just like read and watch movies and like, you know, talk about all the things I love. I, there's just, there's not enough time to consume and everything. And that is like the bane <laughs> of my existence. <laughs> there, honestly, there's too much out there. I like know. somebody needs to put a plug on everything and just stop the world so I we know. can catch up to it. This is why I need a time every now. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> uh so i am a hufflepuff uh just to put that out there like every that. test i've ever taken i'm a hufflepuff uh i'm dedicated i'm also like you know i love food i'm a foodie and yeah. i just love good vibes so there you go Ugh, and I, I also have to put out a fun fact for the wb100 they put the looney tunes into hogwarts <gasps> houses and tweety do you want to guess what tweety got oh oh Huh. I, well, see, I, do you, hold on. Do we think, though, do we think, though, that they were actually putting them into houses that would match their personalities, or are they just, like, doing it for aesthetic-wise? Because sometimes I feel <laughs> like they just, like, when they put these into the characters, I'm like, is this real? Are you doing this? Or is this, like, fit the obvious, like, hero, villain, like, you, you know? So it's... I don't know if I trust it. Tell me what it is and I'll tell you if that's what I would have done. I think you're onto something because my wife is very against this. She <laughs> loves Tweety. And she's like, when she saw that Tweety was a Slytherin, she was like, mm, no. <laughs> no. See, this is what I was worried about. This is what I was like, no, I think that this is just an aesthetic thing. Like, I, I think yeah. that they did it wrong. No offense. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> But you're wrong. No, you're not. I don't know. I have no idea. Who knows? I don't know they're choosing. Again, I need to know these things. I know nothing. I wish I knew more. <laughs> so Tweety is mischievous, uh, yes. but he's also on the hero side and he's a survivalist. Uh, so that's kind of where I, I don't know if he would exactly fit into Slytherin. I think he definitely exudes more Gryffindor. Yes, um, because Gryffindor and Slytherin is very close. Like it's it's very yeah. very close. So I feel I would have said Gryffindor if I would have said something. Okay. So that's where my bet would be. But like okay, all right Slytherin, let's hear it. <laughs> Well, there we go. Um, we need to get these statues that are being made of Tweety as a Slytherin rectified and make him a Gryffindor. I know. I'm going to write a letter. I need to speak to someone. Who do I talk to? I don't know. Exactly. I have no power here. I will just enjoy and be like, ah, yes. At least they've combined two of my favorite things. I could just be like, nice. You know what? There you go. I got it. A win is a win. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll take it where we can get it exactly exactly so if you tessa were enrolled in acme Lou, what course or courses would you like to take as far as becoming your own tune ah uh, that's uh you know okay this is this is funny this is actually taking this back to harry potter in the sorting oh. in the Pottermore sorting quiz, there is a question that asks like which area of magic would you be most excited to learn about in Hogwarts? It's one of the um, questions for the test. And I choose every single time every area of magic I can because that's an option. And I'm like, well, duh. And then I was like, who wouldn't choose this? But people don't. People would have favorite subjects. So I'm going to pick the same freaking thing for this because I would want to <laughs> learn every tune type of cartoon magic and mayhem and gags and jokes. And I want to learn everything. Like I'm going to, I'm going to overpack my schedule that I'm going to need a time turner in order to go to all these <laughs> lessons because I want to learn it all. Like what? I'm not going to take something. No, I want to learn everything. Um, but if you're talking about like my favorite 
sort of professor, it would definitely be Bugs Bunny because that is just like unreal. It's like being being in the same room as God himself. You know what? I'm not going to like take the God <laughs> class from God. No. <laughs> wow. I love that. And also it's very, you know, I love that you went for a mentor. Yes. Like Wiley Coyote is a funny teacher to me because you're putting a guy who's like known for being explosive around a bunch of things that explode. I just think that's really funny, but like Bugs Bunny is a really good mentor and you went that route because you want to learn as you want to learn from the best and as many things as possible. Please. So that follows me into another question. Okay. Do you have a current mentor or somebody that you look up to as far as career wise? And like, that's where you want to go. Oh, see, see this, this hurts my heart a little bit because, you know, going back to 2020 when, you know, JK Rowling, the things that she said, I, uh, when, after that came out, it sort of in my brain, you're like, you cannot ever idolize anyone ever again. You will get hurt. You will get, you can't meet your heroes. You can't like anything. <laughs> it's going to disappoint you. Um, but there is one, um, Lin-Manuel Miranda is the, uh, my favorite human in existence. And I don't think he would disappoint me. I, I still think that he, he's a, he's a good one. There's, there's not a lot of good ones left. But I think he's one of the good ones. So I, I, he is just one of the most talented, incredible, selfless, nice, kind, nerdy, amazing, and uh, I could go on and on and on. I love him to death. So him. No, totally. Well, my wife is a producer on this show, and she absolutely adores Lin Manuel Miranda. I think you and her would be really good friends. I know. I was like, she and... sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna say the podcast agrees, and I think that is a fantastic idea to look up to uh, someone like that, someone who is putting out creativity in a positive way yeah. and changing the world and making you recontextualize history. Oh my gosh. Will. Incredible. Uh, what he does certain... is incredible. I can't, I, mean, I don't incredible. understand. How does your brain work? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tessa, I'm out of questions. <gasps> <laughs> out of questions. Um, out of questions. I got to come up with like two more. Hang on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ah, I stumped the question master. Woohoo! <laughs> Heck yeah. I mean, we could talk about anything you want. I can, again, I could talk about, I could go on and on and on about anything. I hear, I, I, I'll talk about this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the day when um, we recorded the theme song, because that was my favorite, favorite day oh. of recording. Um, Thank you. That was actually something that went... It bopped around in my head, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> yes, because this, that was like, I remember this day so vividly in my brain because I was like, okay, Tessa, you can't mess this up. This is what they're going to be playing every single time. But when I like got in there and like, you know, hearing the music, hearing the parts, like hearing the voice parts, oh my gosh, I was in heaven. And also that was one of the days where um, we like, we got to see each other briefly because this is another thing like because of the pandemic we didn't really get to like see each other or record together which some shows get to do which is like right. bummer because i freaking love these guys um but also <laughs> like you've heard you've talked to some of us now do you think we would get any work done maybe they did this on I purpose so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they could there have might be a method to that madness <laughs> <laughs> right maybe they're just like mm, maybe sure. we should keep them separate like maybe this is like a more productive but um even though we weren't able to record together a lot of times we could hear like the different parts or they would like layer like the voices and do things like and uh sometimes my especially if your se session was like towards the end and sometimes mine was towards the end and I was like yeah now I get to hear everybody and uh, so I always loved when my session was like towards the end also we would like write little notes to each other in the sign and sheet we'd be like hello and so, <laughs> yeah I know we're, we're disgusting we're disgusting we love each other um so that was like one of those things getting to hear everyone's voice like be put in because like originally you're just sh like you hear a track but none of the voices are in so you, you like you're like this sounds amazing but then when you 
when you add those like layers, especially with like, you know, it, it's like, it, you're like, oh, this is a cartoon. Oh, we're doing a cartoon. Uh, <laughs> that's when it really hit me that I was like, whoa, like we, I'm on Tiny Toons, man. This is so cool. Like that was, that was one of those moments where I'm like, I just had the coolest day of my entire life. So I'll, I'll remember it forever. That's amazing. And so does everyone sing the entire song or are there specific pieces that everyone has a part to play in? There's parts like and if you listen, um, okay. you know, like I think at the beginning, it's just uh, Babs and Buster. And then there's like uh, like and Sweeties a bird. like they'll sing that and then I'll sing another. Part. There are definitely parts. Um, and then they did like okay. some harmonies and some stacked stuff as well towards the end when they're like the big drum line comes in. So, yeah, there's it's not all like if you want to listen closely. Closer. There are little layers and different people like singing here and there and harmonies and things. So it's oh, but it sounded so good, like at the end. And I'm so, so happy that they chose like the longer version of the theme song because I was like, keep it long, keep it long. Because that was like <laughs> one of the reasons I love like those old school theme songs. They don't do that anymore. And I'm like, bring those yeah. back. That was that was my cue when I was a kid to like run in. If if the song if the theme song's over, I'm running in and then it's done. And then I can't run around and enjoy it. So I'm glad that they did the longer version because I was like, this is like giving me nostalgic feels and I love it. And uh, there are, there's a credit for at least uh, some of the cast. I, I know that there's going to be a soundtrack that's released. Oh. So the songs are going to be put into a compilation. And I guarantee you, you're going to be on that. How can you not include the theme song? Right? And also those other great songs that we did. The, the 80s song yeah. that we did at the end of the first episode. And then, oh, I love all the little, every little song bit that we did was so fun for me. So I was like, more songs. <laughs> Do more songs. Do themed episodes, please. <laughs> so that's that's all I want. Well, I had the utmost joy and like it's a memory that's going to be with me forever. I got to be in the very front row of the Comic-Con screening and all of you behind me, the cast was laughing and giggling for all your parts and like everything that was happening. I am going to cherish that memory forever. So thank you for that. and. Obviously, this has been an, a joy, and I'm so glad we got to make this happen. Tessa, where can people find you on the internet? Ah, oh my gosh, it has been such a joy to be here and to talk to you, and I'm so happy that our schedules aligned with the many yes. trials and tribulations <laughs> of the weather and different things. <laughs> um, so this is this has been just a joy. Just I I loved talking to you, and I'm so glad that we got to sit down and do this. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Tessa Netting everywhere on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, on like just type in Tessa Netting and then see where that takes you because type it into Google and, and I don't know. Actually, I was like, ah, I've never, I haven't Googled myself in a while. I don't know what comes up. So hopefully good things. But yeah, if you're on a social media, type in Tessa Netting and if I'm on there, I'll, I'll show up. So it works. Well, ho hopefully clips of Tiny Toons are going to show up now, yeah. which would be great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, please. No, seriously, every anything that like people tag me in of like fan art or like I you don't understand. I'm a fangirl. I love that stuff. Please keep tagging me in like all the fan art, any like edits, anything. I want to see it all because I love it because I get it. I understand. I'm one of you. <laughs> I, I get, one I get of it. Us, one of us. <laughs> there, there's a lot of outpouring of, of fan art right now, especially for the reinvigoration of Tiny Toons, but also we're now in the Toontober, or what's it called? Um, Octoon Tober, Toon Ink Tober. That's Ooh. what it's called, Toon Tober. <gasps> and Loon Ink Tober is what I'm promoting. So everything that is Looney Tunes and fan art, I am sharing on my stories. So go over and check that out. And if Tessa is tagged, she's also going to share it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. What a great idea. I love that. That's awesome. Oh, you guys. And you can 
You can follow that over on our Instagram at This Means Podcast, as well as our Facebook. And our Twitter is OFC This Means Pod or X now. It's a weird time and it's a weird name. <laughs> I don't <laughs> We're see also... it then. This is why you can't <laughs> idolize people. You, they might just like, I mean, I never idolized Elon Musk. Sorry. I'm sorry if that's offensive yeah. <laughs> to anyone, but like that, that man's a little too much for me. And that, that says something, you know, if you're a little too much for me, then. I, I, he might be too much for the world. That's why we're going to send him up to Mars, right? Yeah, I think he's a super villain, right? Is, like, can we say that? Yeah. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Elon, please, like, let, let us let us live. Let us live, okay? Like, I need, I need Twitter to exist. How else am I supposed to look at my Taylor Swift update accounts, okay? Like, where are we supposed to go? Like, we need, we need these things to run. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Just let it go. Let it be. <sighs> Anyway, <laughs> I love how this is my outro. Just this impassioned <laughs> speech against Elon Musk. This this means that I, I need the, to stop. I love talking. the passion. <laughs> the passion is there. You can give it that. It's very sweetie coated, so I'll take it. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that we had an article come out in Cracked uh, that I am a contributor on, alongside Jerry Beck and a lot of other uh, notable voice voice actors and Looney Tunes historians, uh, such as Bob Bergen and Jeff Bergman. Uh, so you can check that over. At, over you can check that out over at Cracked.com, and. As always, that's not all, folks. <laughs> Have a good one. I get it. That's smart. That's a good one. <laughs>